Greetings Petrolheads, welcome back to Automation, the car company Tycoon Games. So since I'm kind of running out of ideas of what to build for ESE, um, I'm just gonna show you the 2016 lineup, uh, partly today, partly tomorrow. So, and that's gonna sum, sum that campaign up and I'm gonna do a new one after that. So first up we have what I call the ESE Breezer, which is a which is uh which is not a not not an alcoholic drink uh, rather it is a small mid-engine sports car coupe and uh the thing is yeah active wing doesn't save that's exactly what i was about to say yeah um it has a small high revving engine basically almost like a motorbike sort of engine um in this case, it has a 1.2 liter inline four with 175 horsepower. We can take a look at that. Um, 175 horsepower revs to 10,000 RPM. As I said, almost like on a motorbike. I know that those guys can can get even more power out of 1.2 liters, but that's you know, with like 13 or 14,000 uh, RPMs, and that's not possible in the game. But so. Uh, it has a, an aluminium monocoque, double wishbone front suspension, push rods on the rear. I was sort of thinking about push rods on both ends, but I don't think any car today has push rods uh, on both ends. I could be wrong, but as far as I know, you know, there's no, there's no car that has push rods front and rear. Anyway, and we got fiber glass panels going sort of back to the roots on, on that one. And uh, aesthetically, we have LEDs up front with the indicators integrated into some of them, as you can see. And yeah, some LED on the rear end as well. And looking pretty like almost futuristic, like at least very contemporary with those LEDs and the sleek, um, design work with the plastic stripes and stats wise we got 54.5 drivability which is good 60.1 spoiliness which is even better considering this is only a 1.2 liter engine it weighs less than a thousand kilograms uses less than 10 liters per hundred kilometers has reasonable running cost because again it is a really small engine um does 0 to 100 in wait that should be 5.7 seconds normally in any case wait is it 5.7 now yeah okay maybe that and changed by just one point 5.7 seconds 0 to 100 As you can see though, of course, once it gets into like fourth gear, it's sort of running out of power. That is okay though, because the quarter mile happens in, wait, well, let's, let's just stop it here. Quarter mile is in 14.3 seconds, which is not bad. Not bad at all. It sells for, wait, I'm gonna increase this by 25%. $28,625 It's not too shabby. It's, I mean you could have a Mustang for that sort of money or you could have something that looks like this. Um, pretty sure that this looks more exotic than a Mustang. Definitely rarer. I'm not gonna say it's better than a Mustang. I mean that's the, the choice is up to you of course. Um, there is another version of this as well though, and it is with a V8. It's a tiny V8. And it's a flat plane V8. That's the first flat plane V8 from ESE. It is a 2.5 liter. Again, yeah, active wing didn't save. That's okay. We can fix that. It's a 2.5 liter 
again revving to 10,000 rpm, 350 horsepower, and that'll get this thing moving at a fine pace. Like if the if the 1.2 liter breezer is just a little bit too slow for you, this will definitely satisfy you. Because it does 0 to 100 in 3.6 seconds, reaches 267 uh, kilometers an hour. And does the quarter mile in 12 seconds. So unlike the, the 1.2 liter, this doesn't seem to be running out of power in fourth gear. Uh, this will do Laguna Seca pretty quickly. Let's see. So that's 141.2, which is actually pretty damn good. That is 141.2. Let me look that up for you. That's uh, yeah, that's pretty much the same as the as the new Porsche Cayman S. However, this car will cost you thirty-seven thousand dollars, whereas the Cayman S is well more expensive uh, at the very least. Um, so. Aesthetically, we got basically just the one necessary change that this is a little bit bigger and also we have two more vents right here in order to cool the engine because like that that one vent alone on the 1.2 liter that offers just enough cooling for, for that engine but for the V8 we need a little bit more. And those, those, those vents are subtle, you know, they're not, you know, huge and and attention seeking if you will but um yeah that is the the breezer basically in a nutshell this also has a six speed manual gearbox um yeah we haven't talked about tires yet the, uh, sports tires for both cars obviously um this one comes on 19 inch rims the v8 and the uh, four cylinder gets 17s magnesium rims i think in both of them this one gets ceramics, or as the uh, four cylinder gets vented discs. We got the downforce under tray on both of them. I'm not sure about that anymore. It's it's been a little while since I've built this car, but I, I think the four cylinder, yeah, it might actually have a fully clad on a tray. Let's see. We, I can just give you a little a little glance of what what this thing has. Even when I've already loaded it up, it still doesn't uh, save the, the active wing when I change between trims. So, electric limited slip differential on both cars. Oh, actually this does have 19 inch rims as well. Alloy rims though. Yep, vented discs. A downforce on a tray. Sport interior, basic infotainment because like... The engine and, and the handling of, of this car are your entertainment in, in, in this one. You don't need like fancy touch screens and whatnot to be entertained in this car. Um, just just hit the throttle and uh, you know take a corner as, as quickly as you as you dare and it'll go around every time. So that is that is the breezer. Next up we have The Growler, the 2016 Growler. I realized that the 2005 Growler was a very popular car, actually. Um, please, why did the looks not save on this one? Um, I actually changed the looks on this one. Does it still have it in the... Yeah, okay, it, it still has it saved. Um, yeah. yeah, so basically... We have a big bonnet tomb, we have the pretty standard design by now. Uh, on, on the front we have some pretty thin red uh, taillights that go all the way. And that is sort of, you know, thematically correct with, um, what was I about to say, with, with like muscle, with like the modern iterations of of muscle cars say the challenger the 
the the charger those have like red tail lights that just go all the way and they uh, take all the functions and like they have integrated indicators and whatnot integrated braking lights and so on and so forth and this would have that as well and it is obviously rear wheel drive it has a 5 liter v8 engine it has a 420 horsepower in its base trim just like the previous generation v8 crawler no no that, that one actually had 400 horsepower i think yeah and uh it it weighs quite a lot 1616 kilograms but that's okay because we got a lot of power obviously um this will do the quarter mile pretty quickly by pretty quickly in this case i mean yeah 13 seconds flat um this one the the 5 liter 420 horsepower version is obviously supposed to compete with the mustang gt which also is a 5 liter v8 with 420 horsepower so basically a match made in heaven um what else do we what else is there to talk about this has aluminium panels ahs steel um, monocoque uh, we did that because the chassis is going to be heavy and the panel is going to be the panels are going to be uh, light is, is what I'm getting at and uh, therefore we have a low center of gravity also we have pushrod rear suspension on this on this car which is not really muscle car like at all but it's certainly I think a nice feature to have for better handling because you know even even the mustang the camaro the the charger well maybe the charger less so but especially the camaro and the mustang they have been much much more focused on improving their handling in in the last couple of years than you know they traditionally used to and we want to keep up with with that as well so we we put that push rod suspension on there because we've already used it on another on another car the one we've seen before the and the breezer and this however also has a pretty silly version with a turbocharged version of this engine called the 660 you can probably guess what that stands for exactly it's the power output 660 horsepower uh, comes from a twin turbocharged version of this 5 liter V8 block. Has so much torque in the mid range, and obviously old school turbochargers like like you get in automation. Uh, six speed manual gearbox, as on the other breezer, uh, not breezer, the other uh, growler. The 5 liter. We have sports tires, 325s front and rear. Like this is. Don't call. Don't call me out on that though, because what is the Camaro's? What whatever the hardest version is, the ZL1 or the Z28. Um, that one has 315s front and rear, so it's got the same width of tire front and rear, and uh, you know. Why wouldn't we do the same thing? Just you know, ten millimeters wider. It, it's it's not it's not that far off. Uh, looks like we got a little bit of brake fade that I should fix. Oh, actually, it's not due to the front brakes. It's due to the. Uh, it's not due to the, due to the rear brakes, I should say. It's due to the front brakes. Okay. Um, Fully clad under tray for more top speed. Um, not really any quality in, in the aerodynamics as we don't really need it. Sport interior as as you're used to with with this brand. And then active sport suspension. And a pretty 
you know, not super sporty uh, suspension setup because we're already working on that spoilers with the tire setup. So. This, of course, is a competitor to the G, uh, to the uh, Shelby GT500 with 650 horsepower. 12.2 second quarter mile time is probably not as good as the Shelby, but that is because you know cars get way too much wheel spin in this game. There's just not, it's just not no way around that. It it would on the real drags to it would probably do a lot better zero to hundred than four point four seconds. Let's see what it would do on full on semi slicks. Four point one seconds still, um, and quarter mile would be. Eleven point nine, so not significantly faster, and therefore I just, you know, it is just a, a thing that you know the grip levels in automation are just not realistic, and that's fine because the game is still in development. But it's just something I should point out that traction off the line isn't as it should be. Good. Uh, now that we've looked at this one gonna show you one more today and well actually this is one I did on the stream and it's just completely silly we just forget that but the uh, new ESE monsoon um, looks very much like a Mustang from the front end uh, I admit that <laughs> However, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Uh, the rear looks way different from a Mustang, though. You gotta admit that. Um, so, we got another aluminium chassis here with fiberglass panels. Again, going back to our roots. You know, back to when we built all of our sports cars from uh, fiberglass. It, it too has pushrod rear suspension and this is of course also to give it more performance limiting the, the trunk space admittedly but uh, it it will perform well I, I can assure you that um, so engine wise that's not where I wanted to go engine wise this has a 5 liter twin turbo V8 as well which and and uh, if I didn't like if I need to mention that this competes with the uh, Mercedes C63 AMG S, the Cadillac ATS-V, the BMW M3. Although the M3 is maybe a little bit underpowered in that comparison on on sheer horsepower anyway, but um, we we took the power levels uh, one step further basically and put. Essentially, the sort of power you get in an E63 AMG S into a car that competes with the C-Class AMG. Uh, so, 580 horsepower and a 7-speed double-clutch gearbox, electric LSD, of course, sports tires, 20-inch rims to make for better performance. I actually did tune this quite a bit and uh, it just performs way better with 20 inch rims than with 19 inch ones. We got ceramic brakes front and rear, a downforce on the tray with quite a bit of downforce actually and sport interior although with plus 5 quality in order to somewhat uh, match the Germans, the BMW and the Mercedes. Although. The Mercedes would probably go for like luxury infotainment. BMW maybe, I don't know. But uh, the interior would still be like 
imagine the sort of interior you get in a supercar like the McLaren 12C or the Lamborghini Huracan, but maybe with a little bit more more leather, a little bit more details. That's what, what the plus five quality means. And uh, yeah, at the sport suspension, I spent quite a bit of time tuning this as well because I was having a little bit of you know performance issues around the track around this track to be particular now the m3 does this track in actually the, the m4 did it in 139.69 the atsv coupe did it in 139.65.65 uh, so only 400 so second faster and the c am the c63 amg s did it in 140.5 so, once it's done loading, we will uh, get a lap time. One forty point two one. So it's pretty much in the middle of the field there. It does not outperform the Cadillac and the and the BMW, but it does outperform the Mercedes. And it costs fifty-seven thousand six hundred dollars, which is, I think, a little bit cheaper than all of them. So you know, it's 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 not bad. It's it's also the most powerful one. It's certainly the one you can, you know, drift most easily. <laughs> um, basically, because there's just so much power. You, you see that thirty-four point nine percent wheel spin. If you turn off the traction control in this one, you're going sideways all the way. <laughs> like you can probably have so much fun with this car. Economy is actually not terrible. Um, sure, the M3s and M4s economy on paper is better, but only on paper, trust me. Um, reliability is where it should be for a premium car. Um, Running costs are sort of high, but then again, they will be on 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 the other cars as well in in its class. So, and unlike the others, this will this will crack 300 kilometers an hour. So there's there's your um, reason to buy this car, or one more reason I should I should say. Because, you know, one reason was it has more power, second reason, uh, easier to drift, third reason, higher top speed. So, perhaps this is the one for you if you want an alternative to a BMW M3. Um, yeah, so that is the last car I'm going to show you today. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Leave a like or a comment if you did. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.